opening up the UFC Paris fight card, we have Balagioki taking on Christopher Duncan. Balagioki, 9-1 in his career. He is 5-0 in his last five. And he is on a nine-fight win streak. He's taking on Chris Duncan, 11-2 in his career. 4-1 in his last five. He is coming off that submission loss to Manuel Torres. And I originally broke down this fight with no odds. I always do my research and pick without looking at the odds as much as I can avoid it. Wow, you must have watched my uh, How to Pick an Underdog. I did watch it, video. I did watch it, but we have talked many, many, many times. Well, before, I think that was kind of my thing uh, from the beginning. Yeah, sure. So, sure. Anyway, the odds didn't even exist two weeks ago when I broke down this fight. And I said, I feel like Balaji is going to be a favorite. And here he is as a good size favorite. And I got to be honest with you. I think he probably should be the favorite given their last performances, but I don't think Balaji is as good as these odds indicate. He is a busy striker. He does have a decent jab. He's got some good power. He'll pump that jab out there. He'll try to set things mm. up and then just explode in the combinations mm. if there's an opening. Take pump down defense. Explode, baby. Take down defense is pretty good. He has a really fast sprawl. Offensive mm. takedowns are there, but he doesn't really use them. How could you go mm, from sprawl? Oof. Yeah, okay. He does tend to slow down as fights go on, but can stay a little bit dangerous. He's coming off that win over Timmy Quambo. And we'll talk about that win in a second because that fight has me thinking he's a little overrated. He's taking on Chris Duncan. Chris Duncan, tough as nails, dude. He does have some power in his hands. Never out of a fight. We've seen that guy almost unconscious more than one time just to sit up, stand up vertical, and keep moving forward like nothing happened. He's an accurate striker. His hands are low, which is how he gets hit so often, but he is willing to stand in the pocket and just absolutely throw down. He'll grapple. He's got 10 takedowns in five UFC fights, but the control isn't there. He's coming off that submission loss to Manuel Torres, but he was looking pretty good on the feet. He landed big. He had some success, and then for some reason, an absolute fight IQ dump started the wrestle, started the grapple, and ultimately that's what led to that loss. Made no sense. Absolute shit decision-making. But here he is as a big dog. And anytime I watch these fights, I have my laptop in front of me. If you've seen the vlog, you see the laptop there. I take my notes because I want to remember exactly what I felt the first time I watched it. Because when you go back and watch tape, you already know the outcome. And when you already know the outcome of a fight, you, you kind of see it a little different, right? You, you know what's about to happen and you, you kind of see it a little different. Sometimes it gives you some clarity. Other times it'll, it'll sway you and you're looking for things because you know what's happening. My notes for this were Balaji is overrated and anybody with a decent jab can light him up. So then I did go back and rewatch that fight. Now say that again. I said Balaji is overrated and anyone with a decent jab can light him up. Why did you write in the chat, I want to sprawl and explode on top of a nice brisket? First of all, I did not write that, but I would explode on a brisket. That brisket that Alex made exploded. The juices were flowing when he cut that. Thing. 14 fights, Angelo. Come on. Let's stay on topic. Yeah, that wasn't me. Um, anyway, long story long at this point. I do think Chris Duncan wins this fight. He is going to be my pick. Not the most confident pick I've ever had, but he is insanely tough and durable. And I think he will pump that jab and stay in Balaji's face. And if Balaji doesn't have the early success with just being faster and hitting hard, he will certainly fade, and Chris will not. He'll stay in his face. Chris Duncan's going to be the pick. Not the most confident pick I've ever had in my entire life, Thank but if God. this line continues to widen, I might do a little sprinkle-sprinkle, maybe inside the distance decision, no action, because of how insanely tough Chris is. What do you think, Jakey Boy? Uh, Oki is going to be the better fighter here. He's going to be the real prospect between the two. It's no you know shade to Chris Duncan. I think he's a good fighter as well. He is going to be my pick, but I'll be honest. I do worry about a few things. Number one, Oki is kind of a sit and wait guy sometimes, right? I mean, he'll have that pressure and he looks like he, he really is about to throw some fucking shit, but he will just kind of wait and he will wait and he will wait. And I hate people that just lose minutes because they're just not doing anything. And he is one of those people that will kind of drop. God damn it, Angelo. It's the dog. You want me to hit him? Joey. But he will just kind of wait and wait and wait sometimes. And then all of a sudden, if you do that too much, you're losing the fight. The next thing I, I, I don't like about Oki is he is very front. He is very heavy on that front leg because he has that boxing stance and he wants to be heavy on that front leg to really fire that jab. He's got a really, really nice jab. What I worry about is Chris Duncan is an ATT guy, 
right? And uh, Team ATT is Team Calf Kick. And I have to imagine they're going to come in with a Calf Kick game plan. If Oki is just sitting there waiting, heavy on that front foot, he could get that leg kick or that leg chewed up from leg kicks from Chris Duncan. But as a striker, as a fighter, I think he's going to be the better fighter. I've been real close to fucking betting him, but just those, you know, those ATT guys come in, sometimes they have a good game plan and they can kind of figure it out. As you mentioned, he is a tough dude. He has some wrestling as well. Oki is definitely new to the wrestling, but you can see he knows what to doing or yeah. he knows what he's doing in the takedown offense. You know, he sprawls with the double leg. He stuffs the head on the single. So he knows what he's doing there. And Chris Duncan isn't like overly dominant as a wrestler anyway. So I'm going Oki here. I'm thinking about betting it. I'm, I'm hoping maybe the odds get closer and I feel better about a bet, but he should be the better fighter, and he should get that jab going and, and be the better striker than Chris Duncan. So I'm going Oki, but I haven't played any action yet. Yeah, I mean, um, this is a classic example. On paper, we are split, but, you know, if the line is here, we're like this. We're not, we're not super wide apart. I do like Duncan, though. We'll see. I do. What about, do you? Do you like that inside the distance decision? No action bet. You think Duncan oh, can Chris survive? Duncan? Yeah. I mean, he's he's so, the problem is he does get dropped, which is not great, but he's so tough and durable. Okay. Uh, Eighty eight hundred dollars in DraftKings fantasy. I imagine Balaji makes a lot of sense for you. If you we're not wearing like matching fucking sweaters, yeah, we got we got like six of those comments already. <laughs> Yours is cooler than mine. This is just some Under Armour zip-up. Yours is, like, sweet with fake rips and everything. You know what this is, too? Oh, it's a T-shirt. Oh, a hoodie T-shirt. Wow. That is some cool guy clothes. What kind of shorts? Are those are what, are those are those mesh shorts? Like that? These are the shorts I, mean, I had in, uh, in Vegas. No. Oh. My bottom half is never... When we do these streams, I'm wearing the most comfortable sweatpants shorts you could possibly find. I'm sitting down. I could care less. You see that though, right? Your badonka donk? I mean, it's pretty... What would you it's rate It's out it? there. Yeah, it's out there. What would for you sure. rate it? Uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Thought about it. I was like, there's not, nothing good comes from me rating that at all. Anyway... I'm fading DraftKings Fantasy for Bellagioki, Chris Duncan at $7,400. That might be something I explore, but we have 14 fights in this card, which means we have 28 fighters to look at while building our lineups. If you do want to check out what the optimizer thinks, if you want to check out the bets that have been wildly successful, not just this last month, but this year as a whole, we have put up, I think we're over 20-something units of net profit this year. I'd have to look at the chart, but... I just showed you all the data for the last month because when we talk about $10, we talk in month increments. We want picks.com. Click become a member. It's freaking $10. You're going to get four events. It's $2.50 an event. What an absolute joke. We do have a couple of super chats here. $1.99 from Angel. He says, free P. Diddy. Wow. Demonetized now. Yeah. I mean, I think he has a GoFundMe on hell, but thank you for that. Um, Kristen says those brisket slices live rent free in my mind. That is from the fight foods vlog. I took all that brisket that there was leftover brisket. It was a full 10 pound oh. brisket. Mm. You were invited over. You chose you. I invited you over yesterday too. So actually there was no brisket left yesterday, but I did throw it yeah, in. Angelo chili. invites people over. You want to go to the pool? It's like, it's NFL Sunday, Angelo. What the fuck are you I doing? Ha I have a TV. I have a TV outside. You could, we could have done all the things. And it worked out because I went to the star anyway. So screw you. Um, Ooh, you love the star. You. I do love. The you star. gotta go see the star, man. You go the star. The first time you ever visited Texas, oh. Tiffany was like, "Go there and do a tour," and you were like, "This is incredible." Then you moved here, so yeah, the star is oh, sweet. Do you go to the star? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Star. I mean, you, you can't shit. Whoa, dollar ninety nine from David Rio says, "Jacob, get my girlfriend pregnant." Send pictures. Woo! No, we, we got to see. You can't agree to this. What's her to know fucking the race? You need to. Because <laughs> if it's white, he's out, honestly. Literally. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> deal with them anymore. <laughs> uh, and then we have this comment. Anges looks cooler. Jakey boy looks like a middle schooler with that hoodie. That is a medium and he's swimming in it. Nerd. No way she's Brazilian, David. There's no fucking way. No, Rios, David Rios. Maybe they're are they both Brazilian? 
Oh my god. <laughs> we need pictures. I'll fucking do it too. <laughs> we fuck. need pictures. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. If you you gonna raise a kid for me, Dave? You raise a kid, I'll fucking do it. Like if we sign a contract and I'm just the surrogate and I'll okay. That's no problem. <laughs> I'll even come around with the kid every once in a while. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, sure. Let's let's figure it out. <laughs> DMs are open. <laughs> <laughs>